My name is Scott Ellsworth and I teach at the University of Michigan, but I also write books. And uh, sometimes the book that you think you're gonna write turns out to be something entirely different. That happened to me beginning, boy, 30 years ago um, when I was a historian at the Smithsonian. I was writing a book about basketball and uh, I wanted to write how the game had changed before World War II from a almost like a chess match. Uh, games were low scoring. Uh, they were not at all fast or quick. And uh, to how after World War II, beginning certainly in the 1960s, the basketball was this high-paced, athletic, acrobatic sport. And nobody had really written about how that had happened. I knew that race was a, a part of it, but I didn't think that was the whole story. So I start digging into this, and I can tell you in those days, publishers in New York had a saying about sports books, which was the smaller the ball, the better the book. There was a wonderful literature of baseball, of golf, of tennis, but the books about basketball and football weren't very good. So in the course of doing all this research, I discovered this amazing event that in 1944 in Durham, North Carolina, during the height of Jim Crow and segregation, there was a clandestine, essentially illegal, integrated college basketball game held in a, in a university gymnasium on a Sunday morning when everyone, including the police in the town, were all in church uh, between an all-Black team at what was then known as the North Carolina College for Negroes, now North Carolina Central University, and an all-White team made up of former basketball stars who were now in the military in a hurry up military program at the Duke University Medical School. Uh, there were no uh, spectators allowed in, in this, uh, in this uh, game. There was just a referee and a scorekeeper and one coach. And this game was amazing. This happened 10 years before the Montgomery bus boycott. It happened 20 years before uh, the March to Selma you know, it was way ahead of its time, and I was lucky enough to find out about it. And so I ended up writing this book about it called The Secret Game. But the thing that I learned while doing all this research that I discovered that nobody had really written much about was that in the South, in the 1930s and the 1940s, long before anyone had ever heard about Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks, there was a group of Southerners, largely African-American, but also some white Southerners and white immigrants to the South, including uh, Jewish professors who had fled Nazi Germany and come to North Carolina that had declared their own uh, war, un unwritten war against uh, segregation in the South. And they were creating their own civil rights movements. There were teenage girls in Durham, African-American, who were got hauled off, the, off of Durham city buses for refusing to sit in the back. There was an African-American GI who refused as well. He was murdered by a white bus driver. Uh, a trial was held, and after 10 minutes of deliberation, the white bus driver was exonerated. So uh, the point here is that I think the deeper you dig into our history, you realize there are a lot of stories there. We, we tend to think of history in these big terms and big events, but prior to almost every large event, there are, are an unknown army of individuals who are slowly changing our past. And I think those are the kind of stories that can really resonate with people.